This is a technical skills class showing you how to insert the jersey neck ribband into jumpers or t-shirts. I've got my t-shirt here ready to go. The shoulders have been sewn together and the, the seam allowance has been pressed to the back. So we now just need to prepare our band. So this is a piece of ribbing. I just need to now sew the two raw edges together. So I'm going to do that and then return back to the ironing board. I've sewn the seam together using the overlocker rather than the machine. If you use a standard machine, you now want to press your seam allowances open. This has obviously been all overlocked together. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my piece, fold it in half to get the centre point, and I'm just going to snip into that bit of ribbing just like that. That means that when I open this up, like this, I should be able to press the seam allowances in opposite directions before I fold it over, wrong side to wrong side. I'm now going to press this piece in half all the way around. Just work around the neckband, pressing it and pin it together if you need to, until you have one continuous half width band strip. I now have my band and I'm going to divide this into four equal pieces. The way we do this is we take our join piece here we pinch it together in one hand and we lay it down to give us the other halfway point. And I'm going to pop a little pin in to mark that end, like so. Then I'm going to take that pin and I'm going to lay it so it meets the join, which will then give me two equal ends here. And I'm going to pop pins into those ends. When we've done that, we need to set it aside and we need to prepare the quarter marks on our neckline. I have the front panel of the top just here and I folded it in half. So this is one armpit meeting the other armpit and I've gone to the neckline here and it means that I can now just take the tiniest little notch out, thus creating one little marking. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. I'm now going to take the other half, so the back of the top and do exactly the same thing, lining up the armholes to give me that centre front mark. And again, I'm going to take a tiny little marking out of that. So let me show you how small they actually are. Very, very tiny and within the seam allowance. You now need to take those markings from the front and the back and make them line up and just smooth those other edges together until you get your halfway mark somewhere around the arm, arm shoulder point and snip it off. I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to repeat. So we've now got four equal points on the neckline that we now have to correlate with four equal pieces on the neckband. So I'm now going to lay out my front and my back. So that piece there is the back, that piece there is the front. It's really important you don't put the sleeves in until all of this is now done. So I'm now going to take my neckband piece and I'm going to find the join piece, which is just here. I'm working on the back of the top and I'm going to the centre point where my little clip is. And I'm going to make those two match up. Get my pins and pop them in. I like to pop my pins in so that they are at a uh, 45 degree angle to the fabric. With jersey, I don't pin long ways all the way around. I always have lots of pins coming out. Take your next pin and take it to the next quarter mark. It will pull the t-shirt as you go. Pin it in place. Take my center piece, center pin, and mark it to the centre front. Make them match up and pop the pin in to keep it in place. And then we go to our last piece, which is over here, and pin that in place. So we now have our quarters all in place just there. So now what I like to do is look at just only each quarter piece. I take each quarter piece and being mindful not to stretch the t-shirt, but only the ribbing, I will give the ribbing a pull 
until it meets the lines of the neck band. When it's in place at the halfway point, I pin it in. Then go to the pin you just put in and your centre front, pull so it's all flat and smooth and pop a pin in. Still working on the same quarter, I'm now going to this last pin here. I'm going to pull till all the lines match and I'm going to pin it in place. And I'm going to work all the way around. So we have one quarter and in that one quarter space, I've got a centre front, the quarter marking and three pins in between. If you want to, you can put more pins in between those. But for me, that is sufficient. So now I'm going to go to the centre quarter now, sorry, the back quarter and do the same thing. So taking the pin here that's on the centre back and the shoulder, I'm going to pull. I'm going to the centre and pop in a pin in place. Hold that pin in place that you just popped in. The original quarter mark pin, pull very gently, make all your seams match, pop a pin in. Repeat from the centre back and the halfway point, pop a pin in. So that is now half of the neckband all in place. I'm now going to continue and do the rest. My top's now all pinned, all the neckbands in with lots of pins all the way around it that you can see. So now all I need to do is take it to my sewing machine or my overlocker and sew in place. My machine's now ready to go. I've gone to directly to the overlocker and I'm going to show you how I put this together. The first thing to note is that the, my back seam is here. You will be seeing this in reverse, so I apologise. But the back seam's over here and the front of the top is over here. In order to do this so that I'm avoiding causing any damage at any point, I'm going to flip the front over the back like so, pulling the back over here. So all that the space I need to focus on is just here and this is only the bit of neckline I'm working on. Anything that's not been sewn is far over to the left and out of the way. Now the first thing I also need to do is raise my needles as high as they will go. So they're in the highest position. And now I'm going to lift the foot up. It's very rare that we do that, but I am going to do it. I'm going to put this neckline underneath the foot now and line it up so it is very parallel with those needles. The seam join is just here and I'm actually going to place the needles so they start sewing just before we hit that centre point. So give it a little wiggle. You should be able to get up under quite well because we've lifted the needles up and out of the way. When we're in, we just lower the foot back down again and I'm now going to reverse my first pin. I remove my first pin. The blade is over here and it's going to start cutting straight away. And it's going to start cutting right as we hit that join. So the needles are going down before the centre back and the blade is going to cut at the centre back. Very slowly and steadily I'm going to go around and start sewing and I'm taking off about a millimetre. You can obviously take off more. As I sew I'm going to stop with the front of the foot just before it reaches the next pin which is just here. I'm going to remove my pin and I'm going to go forward to the next pin. I'm going to hold it with my first finger and my thumb and I'm going to pull it very gently to make sure that the neck band stretches evenly to the, the neck of the main top. And I'm going to carry on sewing. I'm taking off a very, very small amount just there. I'm going to keep moving the t-shirt on my left hand side out of the way. Removing a pin, pulling very gently at this next pin with my first finger and my thumb and sewing a little bit more. Remove my next pin. As I remove my next pin, I'm going to just check my fabric through again, make sure that nothing is in the way. I'm at my next pin. I stop and pause, remove that pin and pull the ribbing of the next band, of the neck band. 
So you can see I'm not trying to sew lots in one go. I really am just doing it from one pin to the next, taking my time. It's worth slowing down to make sure we don't get any pins or tucks or any damage. I'll meet you when I get to the other side. So I'm now just going around the full space of the neck and I'm about to start back at the start again. So the next question is, how do I finish this off in a nice tidy way? You can see we've got all these little cuttings here. Okay, so there's a, a lovely way of finishing this. It's my go-to method. The first thing I want you to do is open the door here and trim off any bits that are hanging. So the bits of t-shirt that I've cut, I'm just going to cut that and remove it, take that away. I'm going to go where I first started sewing, where the chain was here, and I'm going to cut that close to the t-shirt so that's all gone. I'm now going to open up the other door so that I can go in to lower that cutting knife. So we're disengaging the cutting knife and I'm closing all the doors too. Now, when I sew this last inch and a half, what's going to happen is it's going to continue neatening the edges, but it won't be cutting any fabric off. So the blade should be here, the needles are here, down here, the start is just here. So it's the full depth of the foot. I'm now back at the start and I'm actually going to overlap by approximately one inch. I've now overlapped sufficiently to lock all those stitches in. So now I'm using my hand winder to raise the needles as high as they will go. I'm now going to lift the foot up and move the fabric away to the back of the machine and lower the foot down. Run a chain of stitches off trim and you're now left with a perfect join at the back all you now need to do is untangle all of the threads tie them off and you're done so i'm back at the table and that neckline is now finished but we need to give it a press first thing i just want to show you though is that this is the center back seam that we did so this is where we started and ended i just want to show you once again how neat that finish is using that method. So it's nice and neat all the way around. And what you should have on the outer side is ribbing of an equal distance. All I now need to do is press the seam down towards the neckline. So I'm just gonna quickly do that with my little iron. Just using the ham underneath it just to help retain that neckline shape. So I'm not ironing it too flat, too dimensional. This is a 3D garment now. I'm just going around. If you find that it won't sit very flat, then of course you can go around on the, the dog fabric effectively and use a little zigzag stitch or you can use twin needles. I'm hoping that in this case it will be just fine because the materials I'm using are such excellent quality I wouldn't expect a problem so here we go here is the top with the neckline now complete there we go and it's nice and secure nice and flat nice and even all the way around and we've got that lovely finishing on the inside as well so now, now that all that is done, I can now go on and continue on with my top by popping in the sleeves, sewing up the side seams and then think about whether I want any cuffs on this top or not. But I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.